in this video, I'd like to talk about shifting absolute value graphs. And before we do any of the practice problems, let's first talk about this generally. Let's talk about the parent function for absolute value graphs. So that would be y is the absolute value of x. And let's make a quick sketch of this. And to plot this function here, we could make a table and just plot some points. Though, honestly, this particular function is not too difficult to think through. So remember with absolute value that the main idea is that whatever you plug inside the absolute value, it comes out as a positive number. Now, one way to think about this, why this is the case, is that absolute value is essentially just asking, if we're on the number line, how far away are these numbers from zero? And of course, the number three is three units away, but the number negative three is also three units away from zero. So that's why they're both equal to three. So when we plug in zero, the distance that zero is from zero is zero. So we get the origin right there. When we plug in one, the absolute value of one is one. The absolute value of two is two. The absolute value of three we know is three and so on. It's gonna go up in a straight line. But for the negatives, every time you plug in a negative, it's going to become positive. So the absolute value of negative one, since it is one unit away from zero, that value would be one. The absolute value of negative two would be positive two, and the absolute value of negative three would be three. So you get this interesting function here where it's essentially a cone where you have these two lines that come together at the origin. One of them, this in the positive section, is the line y equals x has slope of one, and this line in the negative section has equation y equals minus x and has a slope of negative one. So this is our parent function. This is the simplest absolute value function that we can draw. And we're curious, how do we shift this around? And essentially, we're just gonna be following this vertex point here, this corner. So let's consider what happens if we were to add, let's say two to the parent function. And we're adding it on the outside. So we're not adding within the absolute value, we're adding outside of the absolute value. And essentially all of our y values are gonna be two points higher compared to this parent function. And you can check that. Like if you plug in zero, then you just get two. If you plug in one, then one plus two is three. So that's there. If you plug in two, then you get two plus two, which is four. And so you can see this line this blue line is essentially shifted up. Let me draw that in. And this pattern will continue. But every point you can see is exactly two points higher. And likewise, for the negative values, when you plug in negative one, you get one plus two, which is three. When you plug in negative two, you get two plus two, which is four. And so again, you get this line where everything compared to the parent function was just shifted up two units. So to shift something up or down, we're going to add or subtract on the outside. And likewise, if you subtract, let's say we have y is the absolute, absolute value of x minus three, then essentially all of the y values in our parent function are going to be three less than what they were. So if you plug in zero, you get negative three. If you plug in one, you get one minus three, which is negative two. If you plug in two, you get negative one, and the negatives are also gonna have this symmetry to it. If you plug in negative one, you'll get negative two, and if you plug in negative two, you get negative one. So let's, again, connect these with lines, just so that we can see what the entire shape looks like. But the key takeaway here is that every x value, or excuse me, every y value compared to that parent function is now three points less because we subtracted three on the outside. So to shift up or down, let me just write this in here. So for this one, we shifted up two, and for the yellow one, we shift down three. So to shift up and down, we just add or subtract on the outside. But to shift left or right, it's a little bit more complicated. So again, let me make a little bit more room. We'll draw another coordinate plane with our parent function. So we have our parent function. You can see it's graphed in this blue color here. And now what we want to do next 
is essentially start adding or subtracting on the inside and see what happens. So let's say we have x minus 1. And to understand this, we could just start plotting points. Now, the key point here is when x is positive 1. So that is going to determine where a vertex is. Because if you plug in 1 here, then you'll get 0, and the absolute value of 0 is 0. So that's this point right here. But essentially, that's going to be our corner point again. Because notice, we're not adding or subtracting on the outside, so it's not going to shift it up or down. When we add or subtract on the inside, it's going to shift it left or right. But what you'll notice is that when you're dealing with the inside of a function, it tends to shift in the direction that you wouldn't expect. So when we subtract, it actually moves to the right. And when we add, it moves to the left. And the key idea is that you want to think about which x value makes this expression 0. And in this case, it's a positive 1. And so whatever that x value is, that will tell you which direction to shift. Since this is positive 1, we want to go one unit in the positive direction. So it's going to be the opposite of what you'd expect compared to shifting up or down, which is very straightforward. If you add, you go up. If you subtract, you go down. So let's plug in a few more points. So if you plug in 2, then you just get 1. If you plug in 0, then you get negative 1 on the inside, and the absolute value of that is 1. So actually, let me go back to that orange color. So that's this point and this point. And that pattern's going to continue. So if you want to keep plotting points, you certainly can. But you'll see that it looks like this. It's the same exact shape. The only difference is that it's been shifted. So this shifted, we can say, to the right by 1. And likewise, if we want to shift to the left, Let's use green. So y is the absolute value of, let's say, x plus 3. You want to think which x value makes this expression here equal to 0. And that would be at negative 3. And so that's going to tell us we're going to shift left 3 units, or towards the negative direction 3 units. But that negative 3, again, that's just the point of your vertex, this corner point right here on our parent function, got shifted over to the left 3 units. If we plug in negative 2, you get the absolute value of 1, which is 1. If you plug in negative 4, you get the absolute value of negative 1, which is also 1. And again, you're going to get this exact same shape, this cone here. And I will just continue by drawing the straight line here. And it's not perfectly to scale. Honestly, it should probably go through 3 there. But you can get a rough idea of what's going on. And if you want to get a better picture of this, you can either use a graphing calculator or you can use the website Desmos, which is a free online graphing calculator. And that will at least help you check your work so that you have a visual of what's going on. So the key idea is that to move up or down, we're going to add or subtract on the outside. And to move left or right, we're going to add or subtract on the inside. And you can even combine these ideas. For instance, if we had the curve y is equal to the absolute value of x minus 4 minus 3. So now we're combining two ideas at once, and you want to think about them each separately. For instance, this minus 3 on the outside just tells us to shift down 3 units compared to this corner point here on our parent function. And on the inside, you want to think that positive 4 is the x value that makes this expression 0, so that tells us we're going to go in the positive direction four units. So that corner, let me make some space here. I need to delete this. That corner is going to move down three units and to the right four units. So it's going to be right there. Actually, I need to go back to that red color. So something right there. And from here, if you want, you can plot points, but it's going to be opening up in that same direction because shifting does not, sh not change the shape of the curve or this function here. It, all it does is move it around. To actually change the shape of this, you need what's called scaling, where we might multiply on the outside. So if you plug in 5, then you get 1 minus 3, which is negative 2, which is right here. And if you plug in 3, then you get the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1 minus 3, which again is negative 2. So let's connect these with a line. And you get that 
exact same basic shape here. So none of these are drawn perfectly, but they can give you a rough idea of what's going on. So with all this in mind, let's do the example problems.